and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today we're going to review the Sterling Arms R18 Mark II. Now this is a premium modern sporting rifle manufactured in Canada as a non-restricted rifle for the Canadian consumer market. What does that mean? That means this rifle better be damn accurate and better be damn reliable. <laughs> So it's an AR-180B variant. This is not an AR-15 variant whatsoever. It's designed, it's made in Canada, and it's been available since January of 2022. And it retails for $2,700. So what do we expect at that price? Well, our expectations are damn high. We're gonna expect really great accuracy and great reliability and some cool features. So before we get started, I'm gonna give a shout out to a few of the companies that sent us some products to use in this video. So Vector Optics sent us their Continental 1 to 6x24. This is a purpose-built optic for this rifle. It is an LPVO, so this is going to be great for engaging targets between 50 and 600 yards if that's what you want to do. It's got a long eye relief, short enough magnification range that's going to be perfect for those purposes. It's got illumination that is actually visible in the day, so you guys are going to love this optic for potentially this rifle. Also, Cross Industries didn't just send us one Cross Mag. They didn't send us two, three or four, no, they sent us four. <laughs> they sent us four cross mags. Now, what makes these cross mags special? They're actually AR-15 pistol mags. So you simply twist, and now you have two pistol mags. And the fun fact that they couple together is a bonus. So when you order one, it actually is just like this. Two units that are coupled butt to butt. So once you empty one full mag, you now have another mag on the back. <laughs> So we actually used these extensively during our review and they worked great. We actually used all four extensively and have not had any issues with any of them. We also did use the uh, PMAG, the Gen 2s, and no issues. It does come with one straight from the factory, so that's what you can expect to come in the box. So let's talk accuracy. So our expectations are obviously very high. I have bought probably every 223, 556 ammunition available on the Canadian market. So I spent a lot on ammunition for this. <laughs> Let's start with the worst and work our way to the best. So this is a fairly long video just because this is a fairly expensive rifle. So I figured you guys would want to know everything there is to know about this rifle and just how accurate it could possibly be. I'm not going to show you guys me shooting every group of this because we'd be here for 40 minutes and you don't want that. I'll show you the best group at the end. PMC Bronze, 55 grain full metal jacket boat tail, 4.2 MOA. So our very worst group was 4.2. The expectation for a modern sporting rifle isn't particularly high though. They're kind of somewhere expected to be somewhere between two and about four MOA. So right away, right here, we're at the worst, we're working our way to the best. Next, Barnall hollow point, 62 grains, 3.7 MOA. Winchester, 55 grain full metal jacket, 3.4 MOA. Uh, Barnall soft points, 3.4 MOA. Barnall full metal jacket, 2.8 MOA. MFS, actually on the Barnall topic, this rifle was 100% reliable with everything but Barnall. So we had a 1 in 5 failure rate with Barnall. And I contacted Sterling Arms today and they did tell me that if you adjust your gas block, and yes it does have an adjustable gas block, you will be able to resolve those issues. And from the other reviewers, that if you guys look up a few other reviews, it has resolved their issues with the Barnall. I just haven't yet validated that, which I will do later. <laughs> Next, the MFS, the hollow point 55 grain, 2.8 MOA, PMC X-TAC, the M855, 62 grains was 2.4 MOA, the Hornady Black, 62 grain full metal jacket, 2.3 MOA, the Steve's reload, thank you Steve for your reloads. <laughs> they were 55 grain boat tail soft points, uh, 2.2 MOA, Hornady Critical Defense with the 73 grain FTX was 2.1 MOA. Hornady Frontier with the 55 grain, the M193 was 2.1 MOA. The Tula Ammo with the 63 grain hollow points was 1.8 MOA and we revalidated that with the 1.9 MOA. So very consistently mediocre. The Hornady Superformance Varmint with the 653 grain VMAXs, 1.6 MOA. And we actually validated this one twice just to be sure. And now the better group is, is coming soon. 
we have the Sierra Match King. So now we're getting into the pretty expensive ammunition with the 69 grain uh, boat tail hollow point, 1.6 MOA. The Hornady Superformance Match now with a 75 grain boat tail hollow point, 1.5 MOA. Hornady Superformance Varmint with a 53 grain again, the V Maxes, 1.26. Now I had a one inch flyer on this one, otherwise it would have been a 0.2 MOA. <laughs> and lastly, our very best group, the Barnes 55 grain. Boat tail hollow point, 0.5 MOA. Now, video where it didn't happen, here's the video. Hoo wee! Ha <laughs> ha! So, we know this rifle is reliable and we know it's super accurate. Two absolutely essential features when it comes to a premium modern sporting rifle. We absolutely need it to be that. Other than this, that this rifle has a lot of cool features that you are going to love. So let's just get a mag inserted here. It's got a last round bolt hold open. And it has a bolt release here, just like that. Uh, you are gonna confuse the magazine release with the bolt release many times until you get used to it. It's just something you'll have to work through. It also has a bolt release on this side. So as you see here, you press here just like an AR, and it closes our bolt. It has a non-reciprocating bolt handle here. You don't even need to lift it back up because once you release your bolt, this will slam shut and it'll be held there for the following shots with this magnet here, just like that. So this is a really cool rifle. It's got a flared magwell, which makes inserting magazines really easy. And they all seem to drop freely, which I really like. So if you want to do some three gun stuff, well, this is going to be a blast for you. It does have ambidextrous safety, and apparently you can put the magazine release as ambidextrous as well, which I feel is a really cool thing. Other than that, it does have an 18 inch AR-15 barrel with a one and eight inch twist, and this is chambered with 223 wild. So that's supposed to be able to take 223 and 556 a little better than if you had one or the other. It does come with an A2 muzzle brake, and the barrel material is CRMOV mil B11595 material, which probably only means stuff to gunsmiths or metallurgists. I don't know what that means in layman's terms, but that's what it is. It is not chrome lined, which is typically mostly ideal for tracers, but it is lead lapped. So another thing about the barrel actually is it is replaceable with AR-15 barrels. So if you have a match top quality barrel sitting in your safe that can never be used again, it can now be put to good use again, which is awesome. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger, on the other hand, I mean, above everything else, which is really awesome, is nothing really to write home about. It's a standard factory mil-spec trigger. Um, it breaks between 6.5 and 7.25 and pounds, uh, and it does have a little bit of creep, but the creep isn't on all the time, so I'm not too sure. I guess it's just mil-spec, but hey. They are in talks with Trigger Tech on having a Trigger Tech adjustable trigger put in the future in the, in the future generations of these rifles. So uh, that'll be an adjustable between one and five pounds, which I'm really looking forward to a one pound trigger in this rifle. That's gonna be really, really cool. In terms of aftermarket support, so the trigger obviously is replaceable with, with any AR-15 trigger. So if you have one of those sitting in your safe, well, don't throw it out because you can put it to good use right here. Um, also, it does have a 1913 Picatinny rail adapter on the back here. So if you have another setup you want to put on the back, you can absolutely go ahead. Currently has a setup to accept the buffer tube, which I believe this is the, um, the mil spec version because it typically is a little bit loose on the butt pad here. So I actually removed this, put on a strip of tape, put it back on so there is no loose between this butt pad and the buffer tube. I mean, it's just something that was cost nothing to do and made it a little bit less wobbly. <laughs> Another cool feature between the upper and lower receiver is it has a tightening screw. So as the Air 15s often had, is um, there was a, lot, a little bit of wobble between the upper and lower. They solved that by putting like an accu wedge. Well, Sterling Arms decided to do one better. They actually have a screw that's located if you take off the pistol grip, you tighten it in and it'll snug up your lower and upper receiver. And there will be no slop between the upper and lower. Which typically, if when I got mine out of the box, there was some slop. So I just tightened that up and slop was gone. So pretty easy, and pretty cool thing to have. So also for stocks for this rifle, they are planning on coming out with a Zukov folding stock. So I believe it's manufactured by Magpul. This is a pretty cool looking stock. So I'm really excited to see if and when this comes out. They were saying between three and six months. So that's kind of what you should expect for that version of this rifle. And at that point, it should also have the Trigger Tech trigger 
and it can come out with the Zuko folding stock. Another thing they're planning coming out with is another handguard. While this looks identical to an AR-15 handguard, it absolutely is not compatible. Currently, this version is just M-Locks at the 3, the 6, and the 9 o'clock. On the top, it has a small portion here that's Picatinny, and a small portion here that is Picatinny as well. They are planning coming out with an arc rail, an integrated arc rail on the bottom of their handguards, which I believe the man at the market was asking for that, likely for coyote hunters and competitive shooters. For those of you who don't know what an arc rail, it fits on a tripod nice and easily, and you can slide it from the front to the back, so it's really convenient for that. Also, they are planning on coming out with a few different colors, such as FDE, dark gray, Magpul gray, and, well, black, such as this version. Lastly, let's talk about the warranty. So, Sterling Arms has a one-year warranty from the date of purchase. You don't absolutely need your uh, receipt, but it'll help. Because if you don't have your receipt, they're going to go with the date that the store received your rifle, the serial number of your rifle. So they're going to go with a rough date like that. So you might lose a few months if you don't keep your receipt. So it's ideal that you keep your receipt for this rifle. And actually on the topic of warranty, so this rifle came out in January of 2022. Um, so it hasn't been on the market for all that long. Originally these came with pencil thin barrels. Uh, the issue they had with those, and they said this publicly, is after three, four shots, the groups just opened up. A lot of the consumers were hoping, you know, they could get a few more shots for their groups open up. So they went ahead and replaced all the pencil thin barrels, or everybody who, who wanted a new one got a medium contour barrel for the rifle. All, currently, all the rifles that are coming out, though, if you're buying it from the store, all already have the medium contour barrel. For those of you who still have the pencil thin barrels and are finding you're having accuracy issues, just reach out to them and they'll replace it at no cost to you. So that's really cool that the fact that they're going to do that for you. I'm guessing because of the price point, they can afford to, to make these changes and say, hey, this is what some people found was an issue. Here is a brand new barrel. <laughs> and they also did that, I think, with the original versions with some of the linkages here. Also, I did ask them, well, what happens after two years? Let's say you bought this in January of 2022, and in January of 2023, well, you still have your pencil thin barrel, are they going to replace it? And they said, absolutely, yes, they will replace it. It's really cool that they have good customer service like that. While the warranty is only one year, then again, there's a lot of moving parts here, and depending on how you use and abuse a rifle like this, I mean, its service life is, 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 is difficult to determine. But they do have some of these, I think, in some shooting ranges over in BC and even in Ontario that have some very high mileage. This one currently has about somewhere between 450 and 500 rounds. And with brass, this has been 110% reliable. With Barnall, well, that was one in five. <laughs> but I haven't tried the gas adjustment uh, while using Barnall yet. So this was my review on the Sterling Arms R18 Mark II. This is a awesome, awesome, really fun modern sporting rifle. If you're looking for... Uh, you know, a buy once, cry once, you're looking for a top quality uh, Canadian manufactured rifle. And another thing about being Canadian, the fact that it's manufactured in Canada means our support is going to be great. So a lot of the time, a lot of the rifles we generally buy are manufactured in the United States or overseas, which means getting parts shipped to Canada, well, getting them imported, and then they go to the distributor, their distributor go to the retailer, and they get shipped to you. This was a nightmare previously. The fact that these are made in Canada means you have any issues, it's gonna be nice and easy. So having that support right here, right now, is gonna be a really big advantage over buying something that's made overseas. So yeah, that's my review on the Sterling Arms R18 Mark II. This is a awesome modern sporting rifle. It's got all the bells and whistles you could possibly want. So thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. We'll see you next time.